I know this came about after a conversation you had with Eli Ross, didn't it? And it's based on a kind of April Fool prank too. So tell us more about both those things. Oh, well, uh, we made a film called Dead Hooker in a Trunk, and that was uh, hugely inspired by the multi-collaborative uh, Grindhouse. Grindhouse yeah. And so we contacted every director after we were done that, and uh, one of them was Eli Roth, and he was kind enough to really help us out afterwards with that. And then he was like, what other scripts do you girls have? So we didn't have anything, so we just bullshitted him. He was, and was so like, kind to us. We decided to lie to the man. Why the hell not, right? So I was I like, know. I have this one, I have that one, I have this one about this medical student. He was like, yeah, that one sounds like a great one. I'd like to read it. And we're like, oh shit, well, I just would be so embarrassed if there's any like spelling mistakes. So, oh, yeah, totally. So, so we said, just give us like a two weeks to brush it up. And then we're like, shit, we need a script. And I turned to her and I was like, dude, what the fuck do you know about body modification? I knew enough. I knew enough. So that's how it went about. But um, I was obsessed with body modification for a long time because when I first saw it on the internet, it scared me. And I find all fears are uh, because of a lack of education on something. So the more you learn about it, the less scary it is. And uh, it turned out I was really fascinated by how Miss uh, understood the body mod community. As everybody turns them into these monsters, it's a big winch hunt where you're yeah. dealing with them. But in reality, they're very down to earth and really normal. So it was kind of fun to play on people's stereotypes types in the film. I obviously got two female directors here in front of me, very strong female lead in the film as well. How important is that to you guys? It's absolutely vital. We started out as actors and because of our um, being identical twins, when we were little it was more like child labor laws that we were working. And then as we got older it was, you know, slutty this or hooker that. And I started to have a, a resume that looked like I was a vivid girl. So we decided to take a step back. We uh, are extensively trained in martial arts so we thought maybe we'll do stunts instead and then maybe we'll be scantily clad but we'll be doing you know some ass kicking that we can be really proud of so um, then we got into the whole data hooker thing and we kind of still got offered those roles so it's so important for us to write not just female parts but male parts that are you know something that you actually want to do I found it as a young actor I was always auditioning for parts that I didn't really want I just wanted to be working and we're we are huge fans of Catherine since oh, gender yeah. snaps and uh, I met her on Josie and the Pussycats and she's really nice to me even though she doesn't remember that no, she whatsoever doesn't she blocked out being nice to you yeah, well I, and I w kept watching her movies and other after ginger snaps it was like walk on the slutty girl that and I was like Katie's so much more talented than that so yeah. we wrote the script with her in mind because we love Jay in, we loved Freddie, we loved Pinhead, but we we're like, there's no chicks, and yeah. you must have noticed, and camera dude, you must have noticed this too, you know when you know when you make a chick mad, and she kind of gets a little madder and pissed off, like, you do this, and she comes back like with this, and you're like, oh, fuck, and I was like, that's an interesting element of women, and I was like, what if we had that for our character, and you see a little bit about this, something happens, and then she gets a... She gets a little pissed. She gets a little more than even, I'd say. No, I think I Actually, love for you, it's about on par. For a normal human being, it's like, oh, dude, the cops are coming for you. Well, there's weird, like, there's an apparatus that goes into a gentleman's mouth, and that's actually used for spreading vagina lips, and we're like, that's an extra fuck you on top of it. This entire thing's going to be beeped out because of you. Not necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. Hey, hey, tell me about your policy on blondes, because they don't fare too well in the film, do they? <laughs> Hitchcock said that the best victims are blondes. Blondes. It has nothing to do with us being raven-haired. I mean, no. just for some reason, it happens. The script writes itself, and then the blondes are all fucking dead or mutilated. I don't know what happens. It's just, it's my Mac. It just hates blondes. I'm like, stop <laughs> doing that. I want them to live. Well, even though our dead hooker in a trunk was a blonde, out of all the characters that our, our four leads come across, the dead hooker is, or the semi-living hooker, depending on what state of the movie you come in at, is the only person they actually respect the death of and, you know, putting to rest the body of so we poke fun at it but we try to be a little kind as well ish yeah. and talking about what happens to people in the film i know there's no cgi is there it's all kind of special special effects prosthetics it's todd masters isn't it tell me more about that because it's fascinating it's been such an honor to work with todd masters and masters effects uh, we were huge fans of six feet under and he's done pretty much everything he's doing true blood right now among a billion other projects but when we were looking for someone to do our flesh art it was a pipe dream of ours to work with masters effects and Todd Masters, of course, he has a shop in LA and Vancouver. And I, 
I remember I was so nervous to talk to him. I had my little notes and it was like, hi, Mr. Masters, my name is... She Jim wrote down Sosa. every conversation. Now we're really good friends so we can make fun of it now and be like, hey, Todd, this is my first conversation with you because I was scared fucking shitless. I remember but the first time we said we need a sub in sized penis and he researched that and be like, oh, girls. He's not weirded out, but he had a box of penises. At my, well, penises are fake penises are used a lot in shows, apparently. So they had a box of them. Unfortunately, it was stolen. Well, I don't know why someone would see. Uh, well, the, the crook is still at large, wherever he is. So if you find a box of penises in Vancouver. That's Todd Masters. Ones, yeah. yeah, quality ones. What can we expect from you girls next? <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> Silence. We're we're lucky enough that we have um, a few opportunities to do different projects. We'd love to do Bob, which is something we were talking about for a while. It's a uh, our final in our adolescent coming of age sort of trilogy, trilogy. Yeah. and uh, it's it's a starring a guy. Um, maybe he's a touch effeminate. I'm not sure, but it's well, a it's a reverse uh, on the rape revenge because there's always women getting rape revenge. So I was like, but that is a common problem in in the world, but you don't yeah. really see anything like that. And it has a bit of a, a monster movie vibe because. You see vampires, you see werewolves, you see fucking zombies everywhere. But it has you haven't had an original monster for a really long time. And yeah. I guess because we have such a crush on Masters Effects, we're like, we gotta do a monster movie with you. You gotta design something special for us. Oh god, absolutely. Stylistically, it's half between American Mary and half between Dead Hooker and a Trunk. It's really hilarious and it's really vulgar and it's equal of both parts.